Good morning, everybody, and thank you for attending today's webinar on the move to mobile access. My name is Adam Bennett. I'm going to be today's host and presenting the webinar. Uh, I'm also joined in the webinar by my colleagues, Glenn Bartholomew, head of our education team, and Mr. Pete Walsh, head of our mobile access team. Are you both there, guys? Yeah. Hi, morning, Hello, everybody. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Fantastic. Brilliant. So firstly, this isn't the first webinar we've hosted as a company, um, but it is the first of its kind where we focus specifically on our mobile access solution. Uh, and again, specifically towards the higher education sector. Now, the webinar will last no longer than 20 minutes. Um, it is extremely informative. And by the end of it, we're hoping you're in a better position to see how it could benefit the organization moving forward. Uh, in terms of taking notes, you, you're free to take notes, but again, at the end of today's event, you will receive a full copy uh, and a recording of the webinar, along with a full Q&A breakdown. So I'm now going to pass you over to Glenn. Um, Glenn's going to talk you through the first initial set, so sit back and enjoy. Hello, thank you very much, Adam. Good morning again, everybody. Right, let's get started. So quick question, I think probably most of you are uh, a little bit in tune with what mobile access is, but just to reiterate really about the service, it, it refers to the process of using a smartphone, a tablet, or even a wearable device, which will secure, securely lock, unlock doors within a setting. Uh, it's a fast solution, it's flexible, and more importantly, it's gonna future-proof your campus and your buildings on site. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not in five years, but the reality is physical access cards are gonna become a thing of the past. Uh, mobile access will enable staff and students to never be without the ability to unlock a door. So, and obviously things that can't be ignored. These are facts. Um, over the last 12 months, you're looking at 100% of UK universities have struggled and felt the impact of the global semiconductor chip shortage. Um, different features that you need to consider, things like low stock availability globally is causing problems, it's causing issues for suppliers. It has a knock-on effect, as we all know. It's going to increase costs. The shortage of copper, it's used in many different industries. There's a big scrap and a big bun fight over getting hold of this uh, particular material. Obviously, it's going to cause shipping delays. We're in a very, very long supply chain. Obviously, there's a lot of companies within that supply chain where you could look at shortages, meaning delays, which obviously is going to have an, an impact on, obviously, who's getting cards to you. Also, knock-on effect for something like this is non-genuine cards will enter the market. So you're looking at cards that have probably got um, poor quality copper, meaning that the chip's not going to be fantastic. Obviously, the PVC, the plastic that the chip's encased in as well, it's maybe not going to be great to print on. It's going to be low quality. And again, Obviously, you need to consider the security threats of maybe not being able to issue physical cards to uh, staff and students on site. Doors may be left open. Access to doors may become a problem. And obviously, going back a little bit to the extended delivery times, yeah, we can't really say at the moment. We normally quote about four weeks on cards. This could maybe race to eight weeks, 12 weeks. It's a long time to wait for cards. A lot of things can happen in that uh, in that period of time. So I'm going to hand over to Adam now. Obviously, you're going to put a little explainer video on, just telling you a little bit more about how the uh, how mobile access works. Well, thank you, Glenn. I think just to add to that as well, all, all of the above, all those points, um, the overall way of looking at it is that it does pose a real threat to campus security uh, and the chip shortage cannot be, uh, cannot be ignored. So again, the move to mobile access, great timing on that perspective as well. Um, so as Glenn said there, we're just going to put a little video together now for you, um, just detailing the steps involved in firstly issuing a mobile license, just to let you have a look at things. So I hope you enjoy. Step one, the administrator securely logs into the HID Arigo platform and creates a new license. This can be done remotely and the license is deployed through the air. Step two, the user receives an email containing a link to download the HID mobile app and a unique invitation code as seen on screen. Step three, the user simply clicks the invite code from the email and is taken directly to the app to register. Step four, the user clicks register and the license is now activated. Step five, on arrival to campus, the user opens the app and presents the phone to the reader and the access is granted. So as you can see there, in terms of the, uh, the steps involved, um, it is very seamless, very simple. 
Um, again, completely different to our physical card is issued. We remove the face-to-face -face issuance. So again, looking to streamline processes. Um, I'm now going to pass you back over to Glenn. We're just going to look at the whole physical card versus mobile access in a head-to-head -head scenario. So over to you, Glenn. Thanks, Adam. Right, yeah, you can have a look at, obviously, if we look at the head-to-heads on this, um, making the comparisons between the two, issuing physical access cards can be very time-sensitive, especially if you're thinking about enrollment period. You can need your cards at a particular time. You need your cards to be in particular sites, obviously loaded up into the printers to, uh, to obviously issue the cards, whereas the polarity with mobile access is it's a flexible. There's no plastic involved. There's no physical cards. There's no access um, issuing as you would think in the conventional term. So, and also if you're looking at enrollments too, your face-to-face -face issuance. Um, obviously it's not been great over the last couple of years. It's been quite problematic for people to issue cards under uh, COVID restrictions where, you know, the simplicity of mobile access is it's deployed through the air. Um, it's obviously done through the cloud. There's no cards to issue. You don't need to see people face-to-face. Obviously, you're going to admit the use of single-use plastics. Obviously, I know universities, colleges at the moment are very big on reducing the carbon footprints. Obviously, to take this out of circulation is great. Obviously, it would help you reduce and become a lot more, more eco-friendly. So mobile access, obviously, is sustainable. We're not issuing cards or anything. Your hardware costs you've got to consider as well. If you're buying cards, you're also buying the consumables. So you're buying the ribbons, you're buying the cleaning kits as well. There's a cost there in terms of things. There's the software as well to run with the printers, whereas mobile access, you don't need the printers, you don't need the consumables, you don't need the cards. So there's no inventory, there's no storing things on site as well. So there is obviously a big cost saving to, to, to consider there as well. One thing that I hear from a lot of universities around the point enrollment time, it's staff resources. You know, it's all hands on deck. You're pulling people from different departments to stand next to printers. They should be doing different jobs probably while they're doing this probably nobody's getting on with their job as well so it's causing a backlog for staff as well where this is managed remotely i don't need to say a great deal more it's managed remotely you can do it from wherever you choose as long as you've got the internet connection and obviously a card is always going to be a physical product it's always something else something additional for people to carry something for people to forget obviously as well you would need to issue another card if that was the case but obviously this is cloud managed it's all in the sky it's a lot slicker and there's no physical product there's nothing to hand out to people as well one thing you've got to look at as well obviously there's no secret in nxp classics obviously it's used by the majority of universities um, across the uk it's not secure technology anymore people know about it you can clone the technology again it's a security risk whereas you know mobile access is second to none it's best in class security you can't clone it you can't um you can't mimic it basically Right, and obviously, just to reiterate on the benefits then, really, mobile access is seamless, obviously it's stress-free, it's future thinking, it's contemporary, and it's the way forward for the future, basically. It's practical, it's got really improved user convenience, obviously, if you look at the recipient, all walks of life at the moment, we use our smartphone for the gym, we use our smartphone for travel, to make payments, if you can put access on this on a mobile phone as well, Obviously, it's just happy days. It just makes things become a lot easier. And again, just reiterating, it's ultra secure. It's best in class. You can't clone this at all. Thanks for that, Glenn. Brilliant. So just before I hand you over to um, Pete, I'm just going to talk uh, on one of the points Glenn made on the head-to-head, -head, which is around sustainability. So... Um, we know that sustainability and reducing carbon footprint is a key area for, for universities and colleges as a whole. So what we've decided to do, and again, it's an initiative that we've created ourselves, uh, for every 1,000 mobile access licences that are ordered um, through higher education organisations, we're going to be contributing to one tree planted um, and looking at contributing 50 new trees to get planted into forestation projects within our region. Um, so again, just a little way of us giving back as a thank you, you know, helping our own initiatives, but again, um, showcasing that whole sustainability uh, of this, this product and this solution. So over to you, Pete. Thanks, Adam. Good morning, everyone. 
over the next two slides, I'm going to be covering mobile access migration fundamentals that, that we believe at Digital ID should be considered in your campus environment. And then following that, we're going to propose a best practice migration path for you to consider uh, based on some of our experiences over the past few years. So moving to mobile and future-proofing your access control system, it involves really a number of key steps for consideration. And we think we're really going to look at sort of three fundamentals in this section of the webinar, which you can see in front of you right now. So the initial discovery for, for most campus and sites is all about identifying the hardware and software elements of your access control system. It's always a really good starting point for any migration project to, when you're looking at something like mobile access and future proofing your system. So I believe one of the first things to ask yourselves is, you know, have you got access control readers that are mobile enabled and capable of deploying mobile access? That, that's the very first question to consider, really. Um, you know, can your existing access control readers be upgraded with a Bluetooth module, for example, to facilitate mobile access is another one because a number of readers out there are capable of mobile. They just need a slight upgrade module. So again, these are all questions that, that really we've got to look at in the really in the first instance, to be honest, um, are your access control readers future proofed and compatible with mobile access? And if they're not, you know, do we need to maybe consider a technology refresh or upgrade for your campuses? So, so the, the first piece of the slide here, all about really com compatibility, really is critical in terms of you know any migration to a mobile access solution. So really, once we've established these baselines, we can look at potentially agreeing a standard for migration to, to mobile access. So in, in our experience, something like a multi-technology mobile reader can be specified. Now, what that does, it allows your existing cards plus potentially a more secure technology in the future to be deployed. And all of that can be combined with mobile access. So it's a true multi-tech reader. So that's the first thing. In terms of the second part, card usage, you know, what, what's the card used for on your campus? Yes, we all know it's access control, that, that's its, one of its key uh, purposes. But how about things such as secure print, maybe to access your lockers or cashless vending? So very often the card has many other functions to it rather than just access control. So what's it been used for on your campus? And what I'd suggest is we look to potentially map that user journey of what that card's doing. And then we can look to mirror that with mobile technology. So for example, secure print, we can put in a Bluetooth reader that, that will allow us to use mobile technology to mirror the card experience. So that's some of the stuff we can be looking at. And then the third part of this slide is really system requirements. You know, that's all about really what about your access control front end software? Does that integrate with mobile access issuance, for example? And what that really means, in other words, is can you issue a mobile credential from your existing access control front end software? Many access control systems in the market today actually have mobile issuance integrated and built in now as standard, or you can upgrade to a later version that has that functionality. And why would you need that? What does that do? Well, it facilitates operational efficiencies because in terms of issuing a, a physical card from your access system, you really wanna be looking to do that with your virtual mobile cards as well. And it avoids duplicating cards and virtual card numbers on two separate systems, which you know, for large organizations such as universities and sixth form colleges, can be quite time consuming. So there's a, there's a couple of areas we need to really consider. And what we're going to do now, we're just going to move on and cover a proposed migration path that, that we believe could help you really move on to your campus to that next level. So as you can see here, this is, this is a proposed migration path. So what we would say initially is we, we would propose a discovery call with, with Glenn and myself where we can discover, oh, sorry, we can discuss site specifics, you know, what access control systems have you deployed? We can offer some, some advice as to best practice and suggested steps to a migration path. And as you can see here, a site survey really has got to include all of the key players within your campus ecosystem of access control and hopefully migrating to mobile. So who is that? Well, that's likely to be your installer or integrator and many other stakeholders within your campus environment. So this could be security, the estates team, and also IT. In my experience, the IT teams are really key players and influencers within these, within these um, surveys and also have, sometimes hold the budget. 
So a site survey will ensure that we can get a complete inventory of your existing card and reader technologies that you've deployed on campus. And that's really the first step to any proposed migration. Another thing to consider that we found is that a project champion within your organization to help us manage and present the return on investment to the exec team should also be considered at this stage. So in summary, we're always looking to build the right business case. And there's a number of key areas that we think really we should be looking at. And those five areas have a briefly summarized. Number one, which would suggest continue to support as few legacy technologies as possible. As Glenn said, a lot of them we know are vulnerable. We, we can sort of migrate to a more secure tech, sometimes at a lower cost alongside mobile. Always choose a future-proof new solution that's capable of mobile access in terms of any reader upgrades or technology refresh. And one of the key things I've found is that start small on these projects, you know, execute one building it with a small pilot, then start to repeat, make sure the scope's realistic, get a small team just to give you some feedback and select the right projects. Always allows us to get a solid return on investment and builds that business case for future projects. Fourth, experience tells us that in the vast majority of cases, you could look to perhaps put together a multi-technology credential. This can accelerate transition to mobile. And then the final point, it's quite an important one, is make sure that all of your teams collaborate, your estates team, your physical, physical security team, the IT team, all need to be part of this project moving forward. And then finally, hopefully at the end of this, following a successful trial, myself and Glenn and the Digital ID team, we can help you deploy a campus-wide solution. Um, so I'm now going to pass over to, to Glenn, and then I'll, I think Glenn's going to cover some details of a really exciting offer for everybody who's excited today, and I really look forward to working with everybody. Thanks, Pete. Thank you very much. I am indeed. Yes, yeah, so anybody attending today, we've put an exclusive offer together. Um, what we want to offer is a free, full-feature 90-day trial of mobile access. So you get 90 days, you get up to 20 user licenses, which all offer the full features, gives you a perfect opportunity, as Pete said, maybe just to try a, a block, a, a small area or something, just to get your thoughts, just to get your feelings on the, on the product itself. So if you're interested, you want to take us up on the offer, email educationsales at digitalid.co.uk and just pop in the uh, subject header, free mobile trial. Okay. Right. Okay. So before we wrap up, it's time for questions and answers, but I hope everybody's uh, gleaned something from the presentation. Obviously, we'd like to speak to you more and yeah, we'd obviously like to talk to you further in the future. So I'll pass over to Adam. Thank you, Glenn. And uh, thank you, Pete, for that. Um, yeah, just to reiterate, obviously, in terms of, the, of this product and this solution, um, it's something that, that myself and the team here were really excited about. Um, we'd love to see it implemented in universities and colleges throughout the UK. Um, so if you are interested, again, for that free trial for 90 days, um, send an email to education sales at digitalid.co.uk. Subject line is free mobile trial. Um, Glenn and his team obviously will pick that up and, and come back to you. Um, so just to finish, we're now going to open up the Q&A section. So if you do have any questions, now is your time to post them. And you should be able to see a feature on screen um, in your icons that should allow you now to um, enter a question into there. We're not going to answer them live on the webinar. Um, we're going to take them offline between myself, Glenn and Pete. We're going to get the right answers, make sure we give the best advice. And we'll send you a copy of these along with the recording. Um, from all of us here, thank you for attending. We hope you've took something from today's event. Again, if you do have a question, post it in there. We're going to leave it open now for about two to three minutes. So thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.
Thanks again for attending, guys. We are going to close the, uh, the Q&A section there. Um, you will receive a copy of this with the recording after the event. Thank you again for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Bye-bye.